Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and welcome back to Need for Speed Heat. Now, in this video we are going to be purchasing, customizing, and drifting a Ford Mustang GT, an S550 Mustang GT. Now, what that is going to entail is us taking it back to our garage and messing with everything. Basically, the stance, the body customization, the wheels, the, the wing, the all of that stuff, and then going over to the performance customization and doing suspension, um, tires, all of that stuff, again, to get it as geared towards drifting as we possibly can, because this is going to be another drift car. And then towards the, end, the second half of the video, you guys are going to be able to see me actually drifting this car, and again, getting more accustomed to the physics and the handling when it comes to drifting now i do want to say right off the bat that the drifting in need for speed heat is actually it's got some depth to it because of the fact that it has some challenge to it because of that and we saw this in my video that i did with the z4 or the well the supra quote unquote um that car was a little twitchy and had a little bit of a problem carrying long slides uh, through sweepers. This car, I'll go ahead and tell you now, is a little bit better about it. Um, it's not necessarily like perfect, and I'm sure a lot of that is like, you know, driver as well, and me getting accustomed to how the drifting in this game feels, because again, you really have to be careful because if you give it too much angle, you will slow down. And you'll slow, when I say you'll slow down, you'll slow way down if you give it too much angle. You, It's all a game of balancing the angle right where it should be. And that is not as easy as it sounds. It's definitely a drifting system that I would consider... Uh, easy to pick up, tricky to master. So you'll definitely be able to get the car sideways and move the car around when you first start playing, for sure. But don't expect to be linking every single corner and every single sweeper together until you put in some time and practice, which I actually really, really like. I like the fact that, they're, that they've gone for that approach where, I mean, yes... It is easy to pick up, but in order to really get it down and really master it, you really have to spend some time on it, and you really have to kind of dedicate yourself to learning how this system works and learning how the car feels and learning what to expect when the car slides and when the car goes sideways. And let me just say right off the bat, I love the fact that they've that they've included so many RTR parts for the Mustang GT. I've always had this weird love for just you know normal s550 mustangs that have all the all the rtr parts on them like if you have an s550 mustang with the rtr fenders the rtr like grill lights you know and all the other little rtr pieces it just it just turns the car up man it just turns it up so much and really and truly moves it into like just a little bit of a new not necessarily a little bit of a new league but like it sort of like brings it into a space that normal Mustangs just aren't in. And by the way, I decided to drop one of those like ridiculous crazy battle arrow wings on the back with ridiculously stupid angle of attack. Literally because of the fact that I was like, hey, it's a drift car. I'm going to go nuts with it. And I feel like, I mean, yeah, obviously there's going to be people out there that are going to go, oh my God, that's just rice. Ridiculous. Well, you know what? If it's meant to be a drift car and it's just meant to slide anyway, then there's really... I mean, like, why do I need my rear downforce to be functional? You know? I mean, it's literally just there for looks at that point. So, I did put this crazy-looking diffuser on the back, and I'm, when I put that on there, I was like, all right, that's... That's sick. This was my first time going through and taking a look at the customization of the Mustang. So the Mustang definitely has a lot on it. And when I saw that you could not only do the RTR bumper and lip, but again, when I saw that you could do the RTR lights, oh my God, I flipped out, man. Like I literally like, so I'm sitting there playing the game, you know, scrolling through all these options and everything. And as I come up here to the grill and I went over to the lights, I was like, oh, they didn't, but they did. And I love it. And they, they really, I mean, and they did, and I love it. Those hood vents, I almost did them, but I was like, ah, they're a little bit over the top. And so I went for the slightly smaller hood vents. Now, the weird thing about it, though, is the fact that I'm saying that those hood vents are over the top. When you can look at the, I mean, look at the freaking wing on the back. The wing on the back is literally the stupidest looking thing. Like, the stupidest looking, most out of proportion wing, like, I could have put on this car. But you know what? I said, screw it. So, in hindsight, maybe it would have been a little bit more fitting to go for the crazy hood vents as well. 
But at the end of the day, you know, I decided to build the car the way I decided to build the car. Now, the color scheme that I decided to go for was kind of all over the place, right? I kind of wanted some sort of, you know, weird color shifty. Like, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted, but I knew I wanted something color shift. I knew I wanted something a little bit offbeat for a Mustang. I knew I wanted to do something a little bit more drift style. And I feel like the color I ended up going with, you know, at least on the car right now... I felt like that it, that kind of ticked that box for me. You know, like it was out there, it was crazy, it was weird. It's something you really would not see on a Mustang, um, bar barely ever. So going through the performance parts, I went through and did the maximum part that I was able to use based on my rep level. And also, by the way, that Root Supercharger, bro, you know what's crazy is that I originally turboed this car and then I went back and I was like, no, uh, -uh it's getting a blower. So. That Roots blower genuinely, like, makes a proper sound. Like, you can hear it whining when you're driving the car. And you'll hear it later on in the video because it sounds so good when you're on it that, like, that, that whine that everybody craves to hear from that, you know, from that twin screw blower, dude, it... It really does make that sound, and they've really gone so in-depth here with the sounds. I mean, like, the turbos make so much noise. So do the superchargers. Like, literally everything that could possibly add extra noise to the car in this game adds extra noise to the car in this game. It literally adds so much to it that... You, you almost, I mean, you get that genuine feeling that like, oh, I'm changing the true character of the car. I'm adding a, uh, like I'm adding some sort of extra, extra bit of sound that legitimately changes the car. Now, I know I ended up putting that showcase suspension on it, and I believe I went back and changed it because I was looking at the, uh, I was looking at the little, like, handling square on the right there that, that, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what everything is doing, and I went through and I was like, wait a second. Why am I not all the way to drift, right? You know, why am I not all the way to drift? So I went back, learned my lesson from the Z4, and went and threw a drift suspension on it. But I was like, you know, I was going back and forth with it, and I was like, you know what? It's going to be closer. It's going to be closer to drift with as many drift parts as I can get. So with that being said, I ended up getting the car kind of dialed in the way I wanted it to, or the way I wanted it to be dialed in, and decided to go ahead and take it out on the street. And also, as you can see, the RTR lights actually light up. And I, like, I genuinely giggled inside when those RTR lights lit up because... There are there are a, a couple of little things here and there on on a lot on modern cars that will make me like internally just giggle and remember why I love cars. Those RTR lights are one of them. And it's weird because some people love them and other people hate them. Some people think they're absolute rice and that they should never be on a Mustang to begin with. And other people like me freaking love them. And if I ever decided to, like, get an S550 Mustang, that would be one of the first things I would put on it would be the RTR grill with the RTR lights. I just love it. I, I don't know why. I just love it. So pitching into the first corner here, you can see that I'm able to carry out the slide for a longer distance than I was with the Z4, but I also do make my fair share of mistakes in this run, um, particularly, particularly due to me pushing the car's angle past the point that it should have been pushed. So keep that in mind as you watch this because the like the sensation of like the car really slowing down a lot um, when you get too much angle is is definitely it's definitely very very prevalent here and if you give the car too much angle it will slow down and it will cut you off you know what I mean like it will slow down it will cut you off it will basically tell you that like you're done your drift is over you've asked too much of the car you've asked too much of the angle you've gotten greedy basically and there's nothing really really left that you could do about it and I, I kind of I it's interesting because again it forces you to find that sweet spot of the drift that sweet spot of the slide that you haven't had to find in a need for speed game for so long I mean it used to just hold your hand all the way through the whole thing and it definitely does not hold your hand uh, through the drifting here now one of the biggest things that I noticed was, you know, coming back into, like, a center position or where you would be setting up for a transition. Uh, you can't be too aggressive with it, otherwise it will snap you back the other way. Um, and that's just a characteristic of, I think, I'm pretty sure that's just a characteristic of the handling itself and not necessarily, like, a characteristic of this particular car. But, again, the name of the game really does seem to be 
um, momentum and smoothness over angle. So again, if you push that angle too far, it's gonna cut you off. If you push that angle uh, past the point at which, not even at which it likes, but like if you, if you push the angle past the point that is just natural for the game and natural for the car and natural for what the game wants. Because you really, you really do have to find that sweet spot. And, and as you can see right there, gave it too much angle, gave it too much angle again. And what happens is, it cuts you off. It, it just, like, your, your speed is done, and you're done. So, it's all a balancing act, and you really have to focus in on where that, where that, you know, uh, that balance point is, because it's all about finding a balance between the angle and the speed, because the more speed you have, the more angle you can have. However, it, it, you, you might not have enough room to get up enough speed to, you know, to do the crazy angles that you might want, so you'll have to kind of find the, the angle range that coincides with the speed range that you're in. And as I went along, I got a little bit better with it and a little bit better with it and a little bit better with it, and then I also make some, made some mistakes uh, here and there. So again, as usual, it's always about building up your uh, multiplier. It's always about building up your, you know, building up that final score. Um, the target for this event was 90,000 points. Uh, we've, we've smashed that completely. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about being precise, and I really, really like that. I think it's a nice step in the right direction for this handling system, for this physics system, and for the series as a whole of Need for Speed. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you all later.